we are joined by the game director for the Division Two, um, Matthias Carlson. Yeah. I was just saying, like, saying like, ah, uh, thank you so much for it. You had a really early flight coming over to us. Like, I did. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. <laughs> but a little tired. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. This is going to be a really exciting stream. We're going to be taking a look at the Dark Zone multiplayer gameplay for The Division 2. I'm really excited for us to get into it. Yeah, yeah and if you're at home, you have the chance to win a one-month Xbox Game Pass code or potentially even a Division beta code for the private beta. What you need to do is be in chat. You need to be, you know, being a nice person in chat and maybe you'll get whispered a code. So keep an eye on your whispers throughout the stream. But also the Division 1 is on Game Pass until January the 31st this month. So if you want to get immersed in the world of the Division before the release of Division 2, go ahead and uh, have a little go on Game Pass. Yeah, don't forget if you pre-order the game as well, you'll get access to the private beta from the 7th to the 11th of February, which is really cool. Um, so first things first, Matthias, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your job role for the Division 2 uh, right. to everyone watching at home? Well. Hello again. Uh, I'm <laughs> game director on the project, uh, Massive, Sweden. And my job is basically, I, I work very overarching yeah. with primarily gameplay feature systems, mainly together with the, the fantastic gameplay and design teams back home, but, but also closely with the other departments. Yeah. yeah, so also, just before we show any gameplay as well, I just want to make a, a quick reference. Remember, that this is early access gameplay. It's not necessarily definitive of the final build of the game. So just keep that in mind uh, when we get into it. Uh, but I'm really excited. Yeah, I am. So, The Division 2. We are not in the snowy streets of New York anymore. Where are we and why are we there? We are seven months later. Seven. So this is very much a continuation mm -hmm. yes. of the timeline from The Division 1. And we're in one of the hottest oh. suburbs in history in Washington, D.C., as you see here now. And the utterly transformed of course hmm. so it's overrun by enemies it's hot it's humid it's flooded and you're coming in from the inside to figure out what's happening here and what to do next yeah and it's a one-to-one -one recreation isn't it as well it is oh, it Washington. is yeah. it's insane yeah so um the division one mm -hmm. it's a little bit of an experiment it was uh the dark zone was kind of like the main focus for a lot of players in the end and the division one was you know the dark zone in the division was a pve and pvp sort of hybrid it kind of had the best and the worst of people you could join up with your friends and have a nice little time and maybe get out with some good loot or you could just go in there and kill everybody and grab their loot instead but what was the sort of what was your thoughts on the community's reaction to the dark zone well they were plentiful i mean it, it, it it's <laughs> such a it's such a fantastic experience to have a game live for several years yeah. and have it evolving over that time, right? And, and the, the, the learnings we can extract from that, not least through the communication with the community, right? Uh, it's super, super precious going into to the Division 2. So I can talk at length about this alone, right? But, but yeah. um, the gist of it is we know that there's, there's a sizable part of the community that love the Dark Zone for this, that yeah. it's really unique PvE, PvP, mm -hmm. friend or foe, tense mood, you know. Uh, so we need to keep that, but also make the Dark Zone a more fair, mm -hmm. less toxic place to be, that, that is more inviting to, I would say, wider type of player. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, um, we, want to, yeah, we want to deepen the experiences and, and, and really make the time you spend in there Worthwhile for everyone. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's, you know, a little bit more predictable in terms of being able to some degree coming out of it. Yeah, right. yeah. Cause there's some changes in the division two into the dark zone from the offset. You've got three dark zones for the starter. There's a change to change the gameplay flow, and then so we're, gonna, we're just going to go over a few of the major mechanics that kind of change. So, first things first is normalization. Can yeah. you tell us about that? Yeah. Well, so no normalization is is one of these tools to to make it a more fair and evenly balanced playing field right so when, when we say normalization don't think that we're, we're you know squishing you all to be carbon copies of each other and you're all the same level <laughs> like yeah. you're going in with your character it's yeah. your build all the internal rpg synerg synergies you know yeah. with your with your stats with your skills with your weaponry all of that stuff is still active but we're just clamping it a bit so yeah. that you have a a more predictable engagement pvp wise mm -hmm. uh, with everyone in there yeah. Uh, and that makes it for a more, uh, I would say, approachable for everyone sure. experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the time to sort of sit there and grind 
one like insanely good weapon that everyone seems to have, you could still potentially have a good time when you drop yeah. into it. That's uh, we have a twist to that though that we'll oh. get to later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, right stay, stay tuned for the nice little like twists and turns that we have. Yeah, because obviously there will be people at home thinking, oh, I don't want it to be casual. I want it to be horrible. I like that part of it, but um, <laughs> stop I will giving see. stuff away, Leah. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I didn't say a thing, Benny. Um, but one of the other major things that has changed in the dark zone at the moment is the rogue loop. So, would you like to tell us a little bit about? the rogue system in the Division 2 and how and why that's changed. Yeah, so, uh, you know, in, if, if you know the Division 1, the game that is live now, mm -hmm. uh, you flag yourself rogue. So we started with it being friendly fire, always on, but now you say, you basically signal your intention, I'm going to go rogue, and once you do, you can start killing other players. Mm -hmm. So we, of course, we, we've kept that, and that you can escalate all the way up to triggering a manhunt, you know, you, what we call disavowed in the Division 2, where, okay, you now actually killed another player, and if you're repeatedly doing that, you, you can escalate all the way up to, to the manhunt status. But what we added is a step before, because we know that all players, they don't want to necessarily take the step all the way to engaging in PvP yeah, yeah. and killing another player, but they still want to be rogue. So we injected a bunch of rogue actions. Like being greedy, I'm gonna steal this entire supply yeah. <laughs> instead of sharing it, etc. Which which is a step into the rogue loop, which will then maybe yeah. pull you all the way up to manhunt if you're so inclined. Right? So I mean, why would you want to steal a supply drop? Why would you want to go and be a greedy? To keep it all for yourself. Just I want it, still mine. But, but, but it's really in the spirit of the dark side, right? Yeah, it's up yeah. to you. It's your decision. Yeah. We're just saying. Which one do you want? You're there's just trying to survive out there, aren't there's you? There's going to be consequences. Yeah. I, I, I know the, the exact type of person that would try and steal the loot. I'm yeah, not, not going to mention anyone who, but <laughs> I, I, know, I know the type of person. Uh, but one of the big things of uh, the Division 1 that I found is that uh, it all loot was contaminated, so mm -hmm. you had to extract the loot in order to get it, otherwise you wouldn't get a reward. Um, Division 2 brings uncontaminated loot. Can you kind of expand a little bit on that? It does, and, and that's, that's part of what I was talking about, of making, making it a bit more predictably rewarding, mm. so that if I go in and I spend time, I won't come out empty-handed. Mm -hmm. So the Dark Zone is a great place, like many other in the game, to get loot. And uncontaminated goes straight into inventory, so you can actually start using it right away. Wow, you yeah. don't have to go for extractions. But extractions is, if you ask me, one of the most precious, exciting yeah. parts of the Dark Zone, where you know, okay, I, I have literally everything at stake here. <laughs> and the contaminated loot still needs to be extraction. You're shooting flare. It's very, very similar to the first game. But the contaminated loot this time around is rolled on extraction. So we can more predictably make sure that you're getting something that's really good for you. Absolutely. Ah, so you get it out and then you don't so you don't necessarily know what you're gonna get until you it's kind of extracted and left. Yeah. Right, yeah. that that's Which means nice. it should stay in level with you as you progress in exactly. this. So you're not going out and getting a kind of low level loot and you're like, oh, I don't want this. <laughs> you're hopefully getting stuff that will make your experience feel a bit more worthwhile, which yeah. is great. Because not all of us have like a bunch of time to play. You know, not all of us get to do what me and Benny do. <laughs> so um yeah, so like on sort of a role with that. Mm -hmm. What kind of new weapons can we be looking at potentially getting? Like, is there new things we can talk about? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, we had, uh, I'm, I don't want to mess this up, but I think we had over a hundred unique weapon models in, in wow. Division 1, and we, of course, expanded that further uh, yeah. Yeah. in the Division 2. So you're going to have, you know, the full range from pistols, SMGs, assault rifles, markman rifles, etc., etc. right? But we're, we're adding a couple of, um, of categories. There's a rifle category now, for example, where okay. they're all semi-auto, uh, single shot. Yeah, I like, I like that. Really <laughs> nice, more medium to long range play style. I, I love them. But it's like sharp shooting, yeah. sharp shooting. Yeah, <laughs> anything that can make you as accurate as possible. <laughs> Perfect. So, but, I mean, on, on specifically on the weapon side, mm. then of course we have new skills. Yes, um, yes. Specialization. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we'll get there. But, yeah, we'll uh, get there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then uh, there's a few new sort of items as well we're looking at. Like I've seen in the footage, we've mm -hmm. had like drones and things like that, which is quite... Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I refer to as, as the skills. The yeah. Skills. yeah. So, yeah. so uh, if you play the first game, you're going to see a handful of golden oldies, if you will. All the skills have been, you know, evolved from the first yeah. game. So the turret is still there. Uh, there's... Seek uh, mines. Seek mines, yeah. But, but we're, we're really expanding, I would say, the, the, the width of their 
modification capabilities. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's no longer that one thing is always offensive just because it's that platform. So one of the new skills, for example, is a flying drone. Mm -hmm. And that drone can range from being an assault drone that you send to you know, hostile targets to being a very, very supportive drone that you can have healing yourself or one of your teammates. Yeah. We're, we're trying to extend the range and really give maximum uh, player choice and writing there. Yeah, I mean, I certainly know when I was playing, this isn't actually my footage here, but in some of it, there's parts where I'd be, you know, the enemies would be flying drones at me and they'd be coming around corners and I'd be trying to sneak around the corner away from them and the drones would be after me and it was really annoying. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to figuring out the best way to counter those because I'm sure there will be strategies developed by people a lot better at the game than I am. So that's really cool. Right, so we actually got, an, well, well, Leah got an amazing opportunity. Well, well wait, 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 first, what? specializations in terms of... Uh, sniper and there's a grenade launcher and there's a few other things which all have specific names so i'll let yeah. you go into that um yeah so specializations is uh it, it's not i want to need to stress it's not something specific to the dark zone yeah, yeah. it's really one of the big changes we like, we've put so much effort and time and development into really making a chunky, chunky. worthwhile end game yes from day one <laughs> mm -hmm. so there, there, there's a lot of stuff we could talk about there, but specializations is, is maybe the most personal thing, personalizing yeah. your character that yeah. happens at the start of the game, which is a, you, you're picking how am I going to specialize? It's not a class, but it all starts with what we call a signature weapon. So it's a fourth weapon sitting on yeah. top of your existing toolbox. 50 cal is uh, the marksman. We have a crossbow for the survivalist, and then yeah. a demolition is specialization has a grenade launcher. And that is just the beginning of a new progress tree that yeah. starts at, at the endgame as you progress through endgame where you unlock more goodies for your specialization such as unique to that specialization skill mods, yeah. some talents and such. So they're uh, quite quite unique sort of weapons that you yeah. yourself... Um, it's one of those things that I always get really excited for though because it means that once you've kind of progressed through the game you get to end game. there's just so much more that you've got to invest and work towards and learn and improve as a player which yeah. is one of my which one of my favorite things and there's, there's more stuff we'll talk about end game later yeah. on but like it's one of my favorite things of a game like the division 2 is because you've just got so much to aim towards you've got so much to do and enjoy and explore and there's um, so many ways to make the character feel yours as well with your guns that you like using and that just feels like you're giving us more ways to it's, it's really in the dna of, of how we how we design the game Absolutely. we want the, the, the division game is really about growing the opportunity to make your choices within a wider and wider yes. selection of things as you get more advanced in the game. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, I think we should move, because talking about adding more stuff to the game, right? Mm -hmm. We have a, an exclusive look, <laughs> right, at the third dark zone. Leah, you, yeah. you've got to go out and experience it. So Yeah, so we've just seen a lot of footage there from the first two dark zones. Mm -hmm. And now the third dark zone, dark zone west, it's one that's uh, a little bit more, I don't know, not so secretive, but we haven't seen quite no. as much from mm. that one. So it is gorgeous. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the setting of dark zone three? Yeah, so the dark zone west, yep. as we call it, uh, is set in, if you know DC, part mm -hmm. of a town called Georgetown. So uh, it's... I mean, to talk first of all, the, one of the beauty of having three dark zones is that we can make them really, really contrasting environments. Yeah, yeah. So, you can tell, can't you? I mean, so, so Georgetown, if, if, if you know the, the place, is, is you know, townhouses, more narrow streets, nook and can, nooks and crannies everywhere, and um, almost a European feel to the architecture, and very different from the grandiose big plazas of Union Station, and yeah. Yeah. You know, you, uh, that area in, in Dark Zone East which also translates into different gameplay approaches uh, since this is a very much a PvP enabled space, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so how you navigate and, and equip yourself and choose to approach turning narrow corners all the time versus long sightlines is very different. Then of course, all the Dark Zones in Division 2, they have different origin stories, like yes, why did it yeah. become a Dark Zone in the first place? Mm -hmm. And you might have noticed here on the, on the footage that there's this yellow powder yeah, so, so what, yeah. what is that yellow powder? So that, that, that is, it was an attempt to thwart the virus from oh, spreading okay. no further. So that didn't go so well. No, <laughs> not the <looks. laughs> it, 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 it turned out being, being really toxic. It was stressed out. It was really a, a desperate attempt to, to stop the, the pandemic yeah. from spreading. And 
in different ways. It, it is the, the common theme between the three different Dark Zones. In, in, in Georgetown, that was actually where it was used first, where people had almost walled themselves in yep. to keep it out. Right. The, the, the virus, and then... So they the made their own little kind of, pen. Yeah, the yellow powder oh, kind of no. just made that a very, very terrible experience for them. What a nightmare. <laughs> Just made it worse. It's one of the things, though, is like when this kind of looking at Dark Zone West compared yeah. to the like the first two that we've had a look at. It's such a contrasting change, as you were mentioning, in terms yeah. of the gameplay and stuff like that. Does this mean that players are going to like change their approach to how they enter into these situations? Do, will they change their loadouts? Or I mean, it, uh, it's completely up to them, of course. Mm. But but I play in playtests in the studio back home, naturally differently in Yorkshire yeah. versus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, versus uh, uh, east, for example, because they're, I think, the two, two most contrasting. And then south is also completely, we have these really big buildings with huge sprawling interiors and, and uh, it really, in a very, I would say, um, almost intuitive, subconscious way, alters how you play. Yeah. Okay. So you might switch to having a shotgun as a primary without even really reflecting on why. And yeah, this just yeah. seems to offer so many like flank opportunities as well. Like there's so many small little narrow alleyways through every area. When I was playing, it did feel like each of your team could just be taking a completely different route to be getting to the same yeah. point. And that was awesome because it's just like some of the other dark zone areas do feel more wide open. You'd have to be taking quite a long route round to get right. to different angles, whereas this was quite. The, these close. big, we don't see it right now, though, but these, the, the big guns on the left shoulder. Yeah. That is a specialization signal. That's, that's his 50 so cal, that's right? 50 cal. Yeah, I, yeah. I do use it. Yeah. <laughs> I promise, I do use it. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to see it. Like, snipers and stuff are amazing. Like, going to be so much fun to use. And also, I can already see the sheer amount of panic people are going to have when they're playing with their group before and then, then suddenly they've gone down a wrong alleyway and they're like, where is everyone? I'm getting chased. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. And the sheer amount of loot drops in this build. I just love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's a very good point. Yeah. Right, Streamer. you guys might see a lot of high-end loot, right? <laughs> It's not streamer loot, okay, I, pr <laughs> I, prom I promise that it is because it's an early access version of the game to point out, so um, it's very unlikely you will be that lucky in, in the game to get that much high end. But you can see here, this is a landmark, so within the Dark Zone mm -hmm. there are landmarks. What is the point of this, like why, <laughs> what's the point? Why would we go to a landmark? They're like little honeypots of activity, yeah. you know, where there is going to be some structure to how you play there yeah. to be rewarded. Uh, but also, it's predictably there's going to be tough enemies here, and it's going to escalate if you start engaging with the landmark. Yeah. We, we had very similar you know, landmarks mm -hmm. from the first game, but they're going to be moving around within the zone uh, a lot more in the in, in the Division Two Stark zones. In general, dynamic mm. uh, is a much more has a bigger presence yeah. in the Dark zones yeah. in in, in two, uh, where. There's, we're making sure that there's there's always a, a tapestry of activity. Going yeah. On yeah, absolutely. On board, which is also true for the three zones. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it just feels so alive. Like, obviously, we've just gone, we went to the landmark. Oh, here we are. I found a player. I was like, we're not rogue. They're not rogue. So I couldn't shoot them. Uh, we deliberately went rogue. And then my teammate killed them out because yeah. they were just <laughs> savage. <laughs> As you do. Also, a big thank you to everyone in chat for hosting the stream. Everything that is really appreciated. So if you haven't already, do uh, host and follow. Uh, we are seeing all your comments and stuff. So thank you so much for uh, everything you're saying so far as well. Um, but one thing as well. Let's just can we talk about because this was a, because we, we mentioned the extractions a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Is um, how how's this uh, working here? Like what are we seeing right now? Because we've got two, we've got two uh, rogue bars right now, don't we? We've got which is yes, yeah. So yeah, th they're in. An extraction area here and clearly being uh, fairly aggressive. Yeah, so I wanted what, to kill everyone. What you're doing <laughs> there, you see the red skull, is that you're starting to rack up your disavowed status. Yeah. You're working towards going, yeah. triggering a full manhunt, which is the golden skull, right? Yeah. And at that point, you basically, on your own accord, put yourself into a, a new gameplay loop where extraction. it won't time out. So that status won't go away. Mm -hmm. Unless you get taken out. So we'll see here. Now else. we go. Now we're mad. We went there. We go. Yep. So basically, now it's survive. Yes. Uh, and doing that is achieved through. Do you see the manhunt gold stare on the screen? So, yeah. I, so are those going to be NPCs? Or are they going to be other players? Like, how's that going to work? It's like many objectives within the zone where you go and, 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 and you have to manage to survive to go there and clear your, okay. uh, your manhunt status. And it is hard, I can it admit. <laughs> it was very hard. <laughs> Did you and of course, the more rogue you are, yes. the more visible you are to everyone else, you know, 
and the Would you say out. we are max rogue right now? Yeah. <laughs> Maximum rogue. Yeah. Um, right, so we've kind of got some more gameplay. You kind of, we've, we've, we've seen you kind of using, what kind of weapon were you kind of sticking to mainly, Leo, in terms of what was your favorable loadout? I honestly can't remember. Um, you know, I like sniping, but um, I didn't have tons of ammo for my sniper, so I was just kind of Except running around. Being quite selective of the ammo. Is that something in terms that you kind of see a lot with, like, in the playtest and, like, how people use their, like, specializations and stuff like that? Do you, do you think it's best to save it for certain parts of fights, or um, how would you recommend someone to use it? it, it it's definitely the the super weapon of your arsenal, right? So mm. ammo is going to be more sparse, uh, and it's going to be really impactful when you actually use it. That doesn't mean that it's just omnipotent, you know, uh, <laughs> insta-kill everything. You still no. have to use it along the lines of its strengths. I love right? how he's taking a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll never go trying to kill a drone. Yeah, so here, uh, the I think in this build, the, the, the drops for, uh, for specialization ammo is way more sparse than it will be yeah. released. Yeah. But, for example, the, uh, the crossbow has this time delayed, almost like the sticky mine in the first game, explosion. Mm -hmm. okay. so you can stick it to someone or something and then boom, it goes boom. But it really excels at, at, at breaking off destructible armor, ah. which is a, a new feature in, in the Division 2 for the heavy enemies where you have armor plating okay. that you need to break through before actually dealing any damage to them. Okay. So that, that's one example of like how that specialization signature weapon So you'd want to excels. maybe have make a squad with one person who has these, you know, yeah. I suppose, these capabilities just I to... I think actually in the gameplay that we're just coming up to, we're actually going to see see one of those um, like uh, enemies that have like that destructible armor, oh. which I think Right, if I remember, I mean, look at this, this bit, a bit, bit now, and I can't, I'm just trying to remember the guy's name, if I can remember anything. Yeah, it's here, Sugar. Sugar. Right. <laughs> Sugar. Right, there, yeah, because I'm like shooting at him, I'm like, what's happening? I can't shoot through yes. this, what's going on? You see that on, on his health board, he has a... A shield. A shield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of indicating, yes, you you are effective on target, but you're hitting an armor piece. So yeah. You, so you know to use one of those socializations weapons or a different tactic. Or kind of scale, right. or, you know, yeah. or focus fire altogether. Like, it, it's really about getting through. Or you can just shoot at him repeatedly and hope for the and, best. And, and, <laughs> then run, and then run away for that. Yeah. <laughs> but th this guy as well has... Um, uh, almost all enemies in, in, in Division 2 have some form of the weak point. Yeah. yeah. If you played the first game, you remember the, the cleaners had a tank on their back yeah. that went boom? Mm -hmm. like that. I love that. That was one of the most yeah. satisfying things. Just like having kind of unit rifle just going ding, 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 just seeing it light up. So we loved it. I think we got a lot of positive feedback for that. So that, that is something you're going to see consistently through almost all archetypes to yeah. some extent. So, so it's a way to kind of screw where th with their mm -hmm. uh, strength. So that's one way you can really turn it against and heavy there, for example, because if you pop that thing, it's going to break off its armor <laughs> really effectively. And I just look at this environment as well. I don't know if you notice the body is just hanging out of there. It's quite yeah. brutal over here. I, I it looks like a nice area, but... <laughs> that, that is one of the things that I've noticed from looking at the gameplay. It's like the level of detail in terms of, like, I mentioned to you when you came in, like the shadows as well, and how the shadows kind of progress and move mm -hmm. over, like, Sorry. over time lapse. It is amazingly detailed. And, like, I think those little small features, especially within, like, three different dark zones mm -hmm. are going to be amazing to see because you're going to get a different gameplay experience from each dark zone you go to. Um, yep. What is one of the major kind of, because we, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, I think it's kind of worth talking about, is what is going to happen with the dark zone? So there's one that's going to become occupied? Yeah, we're Ooh. calling it occupied dark zone. Close to release, you will understand why. Uh, but what it fundamentally means is that I said in the beginning of the stream, if you were with us already, that a lot of people playing the game that really, really love the raw, mm -hmm. you know, savagery, savagery uh. of, of the Dark Zone we released. So what an Occupy Dark Zone is, is at any given moment, one of the three, because if we have more than one, we can have different rules running in the different ones, right? So two of them will be running the, the what we've been talking about, normalization, yeah. all yeah. these things, right? The occupied one is back to anarchy. So no normalization whatsoever. Friendly fire is always on. Ooh. No, it's going I'm to be... I'm not playing with any. It'll <laughs> <laughs> be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> so it's really going to be that place where if you want that experience, yeah. you know, the ultimate danger, the ultimate you know, thrill, but also where you really want to flex your RPG build muscles yeah. and yeah, your player yeah. skill, 
that's the place to go. Right, so that's one of the three zones and it rotates. Yes, and then it will well. shift. So wow. basically, it will always be Different. somewhere yeah. to have that experience wow. and making sure that... So you can yeah. experience all the kind of, all the diff three different Zark zones in that kind of style. Also, one thing to remember, uh, remind everyone about, this is an early build of the game. So things like loot that you'll be seeing <laughs> that is appearing like high-end all the time, uh, that is not going to be necessarily replicated uh, in the final build of the game because we've had some serious stream loot. Well, Le Leah's had some serious yeah, stream I know. loot. I wasn't picking any of it up as well just to annoy everybody <laughs> um, but here is quite interesting this is a thieves den yeah. um, so I think if I remember correctly I accessed this by going to various terminals around the mm -hmm. area I was in and then accessing them and then I got into the den so uh, what is the thieves den? The thieves den is kind of the the bookend of the getting into the, 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 the lower tiers of the rogue league uh, so, okay. so if you go normal rogue so to say uh, we talked about you know that there is now actions like greed, mm. stealing, and, yeah, yeah. You know, petty, petty. <laughs> basically before you enter the higher tiers of, 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 of disavowed and manhunt, yeah. you can enter in this loop where you go, basically have to go and because you're still free game if you're, yeah. if you're any type of rogue for other players, yeah. mm -hmm. and do these little mini objectives getting to terminals that are random throughout the dark zone, yeah. uh, which culminates in you getting access to the thief's den, which is going to reward you, reset your status, there's going to be a special vendor in there. So it's, it's kind of this predictable little loop that you can engage into if you want to, uh, without going full on. Yeah, so kind of like a, a little introduction to the yeah. dark So if you're a little bit scared of going full rogue, you know, you don't want to commit to that kind of murder. <laughs> you can just kind of maybe dip your toes in the water, be petty theft, petty thug. Um, yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, also one thing, big thank you to everyone who's been hosting the channel and if you aren't already, do make sure to hit that follow button. We're, we've got a load of awesome streams yeah. lined up ahead of the launch of Division 2. I'm really excited as well when the base comes out, hopping onto we'll that. We'll be playing this, absolutely. Yeah, you just won't be able to move me off the seat, so do make sure to hit the follow button and a big thank you. Uh, oh, we just, I just saw the balloons go up, I was like, thing, but thank you Thumbscrew for, for hosting the channel, really do appreciate it. We're also giving away codes to the Division Private Beta, but you have to be active in chat and being a nice person and you might get one whispered to you maybe and also we have codes for Xbox Game Pass as well a month of Game Pass which could be whispered to you also maybe all you need to do as they say is be active in chat and uh, Division 1 is on Game Pass at the moment till the 31st of January so if you want to like dip your toes in maybe yeah, yeah. Match yourself I keep saying dip my toes in dip, dip your toes in get maybe. involved yeah, it's, up, it's up until the end of the month so definitely go do that um, so once again big thank you to everyone doing it uh, let's get some division hype in the chat as well before we move on yeah. Yeah. to our next segment I've seen a lot of like, people asking about I, I love it well. it's just all the hype 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 <laughs> oh, yeah I just remember people seeing this straight away yeah like, <laughs> hype oh, in the fun. chat guys all right I love it I like, uh, those whales are yeah, yeah it's, ama it's, it's amazing isn't it I, I love the hype balloons as well <laughs> the, hype, <laughs> the hype balloons it's great um, so yeah, once again, thank you guys uh, so much. Do make sure to hit follow the channel as well. We're going to have a load more Division 2 content coming uh, right here on Xbox One. Uh, but let's move into one of my favorite areas, mm -hmm. PvP. So lots of people asking about this in chat as well. Yeah. Tell us about PvP. So <laughs> take it away, Benny. <laughs> right, so first things first, right, because Lee, Lee you, got, you got to go out there, right? Once again, I was very jealous. You got to play it. Right, a lot, uh, I, I was just there, I just sat at home going like, oh, I'm so jealous. Uh, but what modes did you get to play uh, when you went to the studios? So I got to play two modes. I got to play Skirmish and Domination. Mm -hmm. And they were very, very fun, particularly Domination, because unfortunately for the other team we were paired with, we did kind of rinse them. <laughs> you dominate, you dominate. We dominated. They didn't know what they were doing. You, you like to win, basically. I do, I do love winning. Um, no, I mean, there's a theme here, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's slightly competitive vibe. Yeah, but so. here we've got Skirmish. So do you want to tell us a little bit about Skirmish game mode? Absolutely. So it's organized PvP. Organized. Like it's, uh, so it, it, under the umbrella term what we call conflict. So yeah. this, this is really us day one releasing organized PvP on bespoke maps for the Division 2. Mm -hmm. And Skirmish being team deathmatch. Yes. Straight up. And uh, what we're watching here. Yeah. Uh, you threw a nade. I like it. Threw a nade, yeah. So it, it's really where the most distilled pure form of slugging the gut against, yeah. against four other people uh, in a four-man group. You don't have to be grouped, of course. You can mm -hmm. go in there alone and have a great time. Once again, normalization really helps us to make sure that you can come in alone. You don't have to be a super well-oiled machine yeah. to, to have fun in, in, in skirmish or domination. So you can use that lower level loot that maybe you're comfortable with exactly. to go exactly. into this and have fun. 
Yeah, because that, that, that was always a big thing for me. It's just, if someone had grinded for hundreds of hours to get the best guns in the game, and you yeah. you played for just you just you start getting in, 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 into the division two, you'll you'll still be able to compete against the other players. Yeah, and I want to stress again though that normalization does not mean that we cancel out your build. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're still playing your playstyle, your RPG synergies, your skills. So it's just that it, the, the stats are reined in to make sure that there's an even playing field yeah. between That's the players. So something I've just picked up on as well, it's like, because I'm very competitive when it comes to anything multiplayer, <laughs> is like the map layout. <laughs> um, yeah. And what's been the thought process between like the verticality and how the map's been built? I mean, th the team has done Endless iterations on yeah. through playtesting uh, on these maps, of course, and that—that's the, the beauty of having bespoke, dedicated PvP maps. That these spaces that we're seeing here, they serve no other purpose than to provide the best possible the division the PvP mm -hmm. yeah. uh, experience. Oh, so, you know, things like elevation layers, sight lines—if you know, really, the minutia of that. No, we, we should, if you one meter over there, that sight line is way too open. We need to block something there. So it, it's really, but creating uh, fairness, but yeah. also tactical opportunity given your playstyle, which skills are you using? But, you, know, you probably don't want to be up here if you're... Uh, I'm actually not going to say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, this is a great position if you're a the Markman. Yeah. yeah. If no, you've got a barrier 50 cal. Yeah, if you're a sharpshooter specialization, uh -huh. sitting si sitting up top and having this this perch overlook position. Unfortunately, I was the demolitionist there. And as you can see, I did have to drop on the full team there and didn't throw my grenade. So you can learn from my mistakes and remember to actually use your equipment. But it's one of those things. Is it's, it's exciting as well. If like if you look at like, map, map layouts from a competitive point of view, there's so many room for you to improve. And like because yeah. of normalization, everyone's kind of like, you have the everyone's kind of being brought into a similar playing field. Exactly. Yeah. It's, you can gain an advantage from learning maps, learning, perfecting those sight absolutely, lines. Absolutely. So for those hardcore players that want to be the best that they can, it comes from kind of map knowledge, knowing, yeah. right, where can they get the best position? Where yeah. can they use their specializations to, to get the most out of them? Exactly, and, and I think that what, what makes, Boost. I have so much fun with, I'm mean, not just saying that because I work on the game. <laughs> yeah. like, with the division PvP is the added layer of the skills and the mm -hmm. specializations because that intimate knowledge can extend to what is the max range of my turret? What is the, you know, yeah, mappi yeah. mapping how your skills function, especially the, 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 the ranged ones, to the geography of the map yeah. is another layer of, of depth that, that can really uh, make a difference. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So whilst, you know, even if you are new to the game, you're going to have a chance. If you are, you know, skilled in the game, you're going to have a much better chance because you're going to know how to utilize your equipment and manipulate it to mm. serve you better, which should be the case. So, so you mentioned as well that the game is just, it, it's set for if you want to hop by yourself, you want to play with a group of up to four friends. Um, what kind of, is, is how important is teamwork going to be in order to be successful? Because I think we also, just before we get into that, we're going to take a look at it because you got to play, you got to play that game and you also got to play Domination, Domination. which was your favorite. Yeah, love this one. Um, yeah, I did get to play Domination. This is still skirmish at the moment. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, it was, I mean, we saw earlier actually, there was a point where I killed a guy and then I tried to thirst him, I tried to finish him off, but I put myself out of position. I actually ended up dying whilst trying to thirst him, so we didn't end up dying. Because it's so important in this game, right? like the, it does bring that like core division experience into a PvP experience. You can't just rush in. You have to be thoughtful. You have to be tactical, and it's quite cover quite matters. Interesting. Yeah, way, way more, I would say, in uh, the division two. So if you if you're running out into the open, are you going to be successful? No. Well, <laughs> you, you might. Depends on how you spec actually, with with your skills, but. Uh, uh, Advise you to use the cover. But, but you have teamwork. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. I mean, of, of course, if you're playing 4v4, mm -hmm. if you're a well oiled, super coordinated team, you're going to be more effective. Yeah. There's no way around that. But, but we. So, it, th that's one. It's really in the DNA of the Division 2 and, and the Division 1 this idea that there is no right or wrong way of playing this game it's just different types of experiences yeah but every single thing literally in in the division two you can play co-op mm -hmm. almost everything you can play solo you can't play 4v4 pvp solo of course but we tried through normalization and other means to make sure that you still have a really enjoyable experience yeah and that it's you can start you don't have to know each other mm -hmm. to understand how to synergize with your team members in yeah. terms of playstyle, skills, specialization, etc. It's 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 intuitive. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, yeah, we did get to play Domination. So if you want to just uh, quickly summarize, what is Domination as a game mode? Domination is uh, you know location-based 
point capture. Yeah. Right? So there's going to be three areas on the map that you, you can claim and hold to get score that ultimately yeah. takes you to victory. Of course, you also get score from, from taking out the enemy team members. And we're coming up to a... They're represented by these crates. You see there's an area around it. You, you start capturing by just being in proximity here. But you can also walk all the way up to the crate, really exposing yourself and mm. interact and ex you know make that capture go faster. This this is one of the things I kind of like because any any PvP thing is so super. I, I analyze it in terms of like what's the best way of approaching it. I found it really interesting. There's a huge tactical advantage that you can play and go. Do I take that risk to right. capture it quicker, but I'm exposed and not using that cover system that you mentioned? Um, and do you have, from your playtests, have you how how much have you kind of seen players like kind of working together to capture a point? Uh, do you think do you see a load of people just jumping all onto the middle, taking a risk, or do you see like a couple of <laughs> people pushing forward while one captures it quickly? You see, you see all <laughs> different <laughs> approaches. You see it all. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, uh, especially in domination, it, it pays off to think not just the second to second tactics of an, of an encounter, yeah. but also strategically. Like, mm -hmm. are we going to hold our home point or are we going to push deep and trying to control the middle and their home point, etc. cetera. So uh, uh, I, I tend to rush out <laughs> and, and try to, to capture uh, through an uh, active input. Yeah. This, this, is a good, this is a good question for chat right now, actually, right? What would you do, Game of Domination, would you kind of just try capture it quickly or would you just rush out, okay? Let, let us know in chat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone in chat thing. did say how important is the cover, and the cover is so important in this game because, like, you have to work quite hard to sort of chunk the enemy's armor down and get them to a point where they're actually killable. And if you're not behind cover, you're probably going to get teamed up on. You know, it's quite, it's quite important to be making sure your position is good, which is something I'm terrible at. So <laughs> I'm just kind of running around in the open, like having a good time out here. But it's a good point to actually point out. Speaking of armor, like uh, people watching, if you, if you know the first game, you'll notice that mm -hmm. now you as a player mm -hmm. and a lot of players have the same type of armor mechanic as we, we saw on the enemies. This really helps us in PvP, that you have this percentage total of, of your total health, if you will, yeah. being represented by armor that doesn't regen within combat. And there's actually some time to use an armor kit. So that the, the snap heal, uh, element is, is not there in the same way. Yeah. So you have to be more cautious about how you manage your health and your armor. Absolutely. So if you've taken a battery, you need to kind of sit back and kind of get yourself, right, right. Get yourself back for a repaired kind of... And work with that bar versus your, your means of getting it back up. Yeah. Either yeah. through your own kits or through skills. But, but uh, being down to zero armor, you're working only with your health bar that do regenerate is... It's dangerous. Num num also, number one rule, I just noticed, right? Number one rule in gaming, don't walk in the fire. I don't right. know what you're talking about. I wanted to see how bad it was. <laughs> it's quite intense seeing a hose of fire coming at you. Hmm. I think um, I'm spawn camping here as well. Sorry. Also, also, for everyone who's getting whispered a division beta code, remember to go to the divisiongame.com forward slash redeem to redeem those so you can uh, get access to the beta on the 7th to the 11th of February. Um, so if you get whispered a code, keep an eye on the chat. Uh, you'll be getting whispered, like, have a chance of winning codes. Um, go to www.thedivisiongame.com forward slash redeem. Okay? I did see a lot of people in chat saying they would rush to get the objective. I, yeah, I, I saw that as well. <laughs> I mean, Mateus Mate Mate has got the right idea. Right? <laughs> I, I, I'd be straight up with, with you there. I'd kind of be running forward and then uh, shouting Aww. at Leah for why she's not helping me. I think they kind of gave up at this point. As you can see, the score's not really very fair. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to see, uh, there was another game we did, we did some sniping, it was quite fun actually, I uh, managed to, we teamed up with one of my teammates who had a shield, and I ran behind him sniping people while he sort of protected me with a shield, so it's quite fun, it, it did show that there's quite a lot of different ways to play if you want mm. to, if you want to, you could probably get away with being a lone wolf and getting them from behind if you wanted to, oh, yeah. Benny. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what you're on about, I, I, it, is, it is my approach, so uh, those two games, what can we kind of expect from PvP at launch? Like from from what we've seen so far, so we, we've seen domination, yeah. um, and we've seen oh, the we saw two maps there. I think uh, we saw, yeah. saw two maps. Yeah. So so apart from the monster scope of PvP under the umbrella of Dark Zone, yeah, right, the, the the PVE PvP experience that, that is uh, conflict will release with domination and skirmish, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and three dedicated bespoke maps. Okay. And then of course we will make PvP and equal and important part of our post-launch. Yeah. More, more details on that later. I, I'm, I'm really excited. Is this, is this the game where you were using the, uh, the user sniper rifle a little uh, bit? Ah, 
uh, yeah, it might have been. The skills look a little bit fairer there, so that might have been the game. Let's have a look. Let's see if we get it out. Nah, this is uh, this is not my game. This is the other map, though, that we didn't get to see. So um, this one looks quite interesting, too, another domination map. Right. Actually so using this. Oh, so this is the cross. So using the cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're earlier. almost stuck it there. <laughs> yeah. So once again, so the ones that we've seen so far from the specialization weapons, you've got the crossbow. What, what kind of the benefits of using the crossbow would you say compared to using like the Barrett 50 cal? The crossbow is, uh, I think, if you know the first game, I like to make the comparison with the with the mm. sticky bomb. Like it, so it deals a bit of impact and you know, impact damage, but it sticks to its target or whatever you hit. Yeah. And then it deals damage in an area as well on as very direct damage on the targets. And it is delayed effect mm. and also delayed gratification. Meaning that if you if you manage to stick that guy we we are saw and he goes around the corner, that, that damage will still happen. Yeah. yeah. So if he yeah. comes into his team, yeah. then And then they will chain, chain, chain reaction. Whoa, I will be the uh, person uh, running yeah. into my team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in PvE it, it, it really, really excels as as um, uh, an armor buster. Yeah. yeah so mm, it, it's yeah. like chipping off like the armor, take, take right. armor plane. Yeah. Um, but talking about teams, one big addition that you've made to Division 2 is clans. What? Right. So why have you gone ahead and added clans? Many reasons. Uh, <laughs> <Stop. laughs> yeah. But, but a long list. It, it, we, we really said, well, not least because it was a really, really requested feature by the community. Yeah. And we really set out to make, we said like, we, we're gonna make the most accessible clan system in the, ever. Yes, good. Why, how is yeah. it accessible? How would you go well, about joining a clan, for example? Well, so that's the beauty of it. Like, everything is 100% in game. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you creating, managing, searching, all of that stuff just happens straight from the menu. It's at your fingertips, literally. Right. And, um, the reason why clans is great for us is it's, I mean, the division is in its DNA, a game you can play solo, but it's very much online. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So playing with others and having the tools to find like-minded groups, what you want to play primarily, when, where in the world you are, sharing an identity, you know, a, a visual identity too, because you're going to be able to create your own clan banners and yeah. all that stuff that will be present in your clan space, actual physical yeah, clan yeah. space in the yeah, base physical. Operations. Clan space, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So uh, it's great for that. Just just organizing socially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's also a great place for for uh, mentoring, actually. Where, where I, I think I think a lot of players express that like I would love to help someone who's who's less advanced yeah. of a division player than me to to become better. And those, I, I bet you, we're going to see those type of clans that, that form that say like, "Hey, come join us, and we'll help." Come, you. come, come do this raid with us, or come, yeah. come go do this mission with us and yeah. learn. Because I, th I think that's one of the biggest things that I found with any game I've ever played is you can you just improve so much yeah. by learning from players that have had more hours. Like when I, when I hop on a game with a friend of mine and they they put hundred hours, it's like, "Oh, did you know about this?" And you're like. No, I didn't know about that. <laughs> so, and then you start using that a lot more, and it's going to give you a big advantage, yeah. kind of when you get to that end game content. Exactly. And it's just kind of because you you want to bring up your friends, you want to bring up people you meet in the game, um, to kind of have those experiences. You said uh, one of the keywords there for clans raids. Mm -hmm. like we're like once again we're really investing into end game for the division two, and we have eight man raids. <gasps> the first one coming <laughs> shortly, shortly after launch. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think in the in the context of the challenge it is to yeah. figure out and beat the raid together with seven other players, mm -hmm. class is a fantastic tool. Absolutely, because I mean, it's like not like many of us have seven friends who are in the same level of a game with us that we can actually raid with. So. Well, it's well, one of the reasons that a lot I know a lot of people have used like Xbox clubs in the past is to find other players to kind of bring together to do to do those like difficult objectives the game. So it's like a brilliant feature to do, bring bring new people to meet new people well as well who are like like minded and are gonna try and do that progression with you. Cause yeah, well speaking of progression, what is the benefit of joining a clan? Like what do we sort of Well, apart from all the just the social elements, yeah, right? Of course. <laughs> it, it, it's it's uh, you're gonna have some you know, clan-specific yeah. uh, activities on a regular cadence. Uh, you're gonna have a, a clan cache that you can, you know, work to level up mm -hmm. on a regular cadence as well to, to, to basically have a communal reward sharing from everyone's effort. You're gonna have, you know, clan 
uh, clan member of the month on the leaderboard in the hall, you're gonna have an objective. <laughs> <Gone> objective. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it's, it's really about creating uh, a little bit of voluntary structure yeah. mm. and, and, and progress. You can level up your clan, unlocking more flair for, you know, to sh you know, show off that our clan is higher level. We, than we, we've clan. smashed the race. <laughs> <laughs> we dominate the um, dark zone. Did I hear clan cosmetics as well? It will be. Yeah, I think it's as well. Yeah, I don't know why I've just got like a I've just had clan member of the month picture in my head of just like a pic a posed picture. Or well, like employee of the month. Yeah. it's just a wall full of Benny over and over again. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my aim. Don't 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 hurt my dreams. Okay? The only way you can manage that is by being the only person in the clan. So. <laughs> A little bit That's of friendly really competition never hurts. That's really hurtful. <laughs> uh, when, when we're in the, in the occupied dark zone, we'll shoot you in the back for that. Oh no! Right. Then, then again, I'm never becoming clan member of the month. <laughs> that mentality. Uh, so with clans as well, uh, end game content. Are you, is it something that you're just going to end up getting together for for, for, for leveling it up? Are you going to get leveled up for working individually? Is it like everyone's always contributing to leveling up your clan? Yes. What, what they're doing. Yes. Great. Yes. So you basically you're generating clan XP, if you will, from yeah. from activity in the game, and then you have these more structured uh, activities generated from the clan. Yeah. That will uh, contribute more to your your uh, your your clan XP, if you will. Right. Amazing. Also, just a quick reminder to everyone in the chat: if you are being whispered a code for the private beta for the Division Two, which is going from February seventh to February the eleventh, you need to go to www thedivisiongame.com forward slash redeem to get that access uh, to the beta. So make sure you do that. Keep an eye on your whisper as well. And you guys have been awesome in the chat. A uh, huge thank you for everyone. I'm reading it all the time. Yeah. I know, we're like watching. It's, it's just like, kind of, it, it, it's crazy, it's amazing. So thank you very much for everyone who's been hosting the, hosting the stream, <laughs> who's been following the channel. If you're not following, do make sure to follow so you don't miss out on streams just like this. Because uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You kind of learn, learn loads of stuff. I'm so excited for the Division 2 beta. It's going to be, 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 it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but I've once, got a few more questions about clans. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Go, so go, one, go. One, one more thing with clans yeah. is, so we've talked about kind of the benefits of being in, in a clan, the more experience you're going to get and you kind of play these rewards. Are you going to be at a disadvantage if you decide not to be in one? No, no, of course not. It's, it's, uh, it's not about getting unique access to things you can't get in any other way. Just like we won't force you to play PvP. Yeah. To get, like, it, it, is, it, if, it is different means to progress your character mm. uh, with... Uh, uh, you know, in, in the way that you really think is, uh, at the end of the day, it's about having the most fun. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, as you said, there will be some, there will be some clan-specific uh, cosmetics and stuff like that, but, it, but it's not about uh, forcing people to be social. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But giving them the opportunity. I love the idea that you could just go into, I don't know, maybe a dog's an area, find some people who can mm. and playing it the same way that you are and just being able to invite them to your clan and they can just accept it yeah. as and when. That's awesome. And that kind of leads on to how many people can I have in a clan at once? We'll support uh, 50 accounts. 50 accounts. Which equals 200 unique characters. Okay, yeah. But if you think 50 accounts, there will never be more than 50 characters available, uh, active at any given time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reasoning here, I know like the number is always a, a discussion point for clans, Absolutely, right? Yeah. But we really want to, to, to build a clan feature around a size of a group that you have a chance to actually know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. absolutely. Uh, 50, 50 individuals is still... It's a lot. It's, it's, still, it's, it's still a lot of people. It's just a lot of people, but, but where you can actually build a community. Yeah. You can know each other on first and last name basis if you want to get all the way there. Yeah. Uh, so that's where we're going to be at. It's, it's building those communities that will just kind of one day get in a pub together and just end up talking about those times. They kind of, like <laughs> kind of went through all the raids and kind of like the inner competitions. About that time, I was a uh, clan member of the month, 12 times running. <laughs> like, it's not going to happen, but I can dream. I can dream. <laughs> but it'd be important to like prune your clan, sort yeah. of, you know, if there's inactive people, maybe just kind of kick them out. Yeah, <laughs> Get some active people in. Actually, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I slapped her hand there. I wasn't just like, okay. kick people out of your clan. Get out. <laughs> you, you can, I, I mean, just, of course, you can totally be in a clan and always play solo. Yeah. Mm. If you want. Absolutely. Like, that, that's it's an important point to make. You don't have to play with other people. Yeah. Even though you're in a clan, you can mm -hmm. be the solo clan. We always play alone. Yeah, that's your. <laughs> yeah. We that, work together to get your, those rewards. Yeah, yeah. that's your theme. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, what, actually, how how do you get like um, clan member of the month? Is it personal experience? <laughs> no. is, it, like, you know, is it a curious. voted system? I might tell you when we're done. Yeah. Okay, oh. right, we'll, we'll find out. I need I need to get a head start on that because at the moment I'm going to be uh, getting kicked. Don't enable his behaviour. <laughs> uh, hey, all right, it can happen. So also, um, it's one thing that I've seen a lot of people asking about as well. 
our clan's going to be cross-play. No. No, so it's just going to be whatever platform you're on. Whatever platform you're on is, is where you play, and it's, uh, it also maximizes the opportunity for you to, to predict who's going to be yeah. on mm -hmm. a given point and what community you're actually in. Because, so, yeah. I mean, it's all like it's lovely being with loads of people on different platforms, but at the end of the day, if there's no one on in your platform, what's the point of being in the club to start with? You're kind of like, oh, I can't actually play with anybody. So hmm. I like the idea of that. Um, so there's another change as well that I think is worth talking about, and that's voice over IP. Mm -hmm. So um, in the Division 1, it's kind of maybe a little bit prone to toxicity, wasn't it? People could kind of be a bit nasty over voice comms if you're on the other team. Yeah. You're Has talking about the dark zone. Yeah, the dark zone specifically. Yeah, we, uh, so that, that's actually one of the changes that are in line with the uh, protect people a yeah. just a little bit from, from you know, toxicity and, and, and that type of behavior, which we, we don't like, right? No, none of us do. Uh, so it basically, the, the, the VoIP, proximity VoIP that, that we had in the, uh, in the Division 1 is going to be on by default in the dark zone in Division 2 until you go hostile. Yeah. Then you basically, you're no longer on the same comps. So enemy, enemy uh, rogue players or groups of players are not going to be heard on uh, proximity VoIP in the dark zone. So uh, they won't be able to... <laughs> things to you. Yeah, I mean, just creeping around the corner, like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> it's, it's one of the things, that's, that's just me all the time, it's just like hunting them, being like, kind of like hunted down, just come here. It's like the psychological yeah. warfare. Yeah, it's, 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 like, hear them. it's like, am I behind you? Am I in front of you? Did you know where I am? Just hiding <laughs> up on a rooftop. Uh, also, guys, in a second, we are just going to get a poll going on the chat to find out a little bit uh, what you think. So just kind of keep an eye on the chat, and we will be running a poll momentarily. But if you are watching uh, for the first time here at Xbox One, we are the official Xbox UK uh, Mixer channel. Do make sure to follow. We've got loads of awesome streams around the Division 2 coming up as well. So hit that follow button, and thank you very much for everyone who's been hosting as well. Um, so, right, poll time. Okay, this is going to be interesting. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna throw it up, and it's going to be... Um, mm -hmm. So we're going we're gonna to throw it up in just a second. Right, so just a quick, quick overview of what we kind of we've just done. We've, at, we've just had a quick look at clans. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a look at the dark zone. Okay. We've had a look at PvP. So this is going to be for everyone who's taking a look at that. So if we hit the poll up in the chat right now, it's going to be. Hold on, we're going to throw out the poll, poll in a second. And also, guys, keep an eye on your whispers to let us know what you think. Uh, this is exciting. Right, so polls coming now. So what do you want to see more of? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, that is going to be the poll. So, do you want to see more of PvP? Do you want to see more of the Dark Zone? Do you want to see right. more Dark Zone East? Hmm? West? Yeah, West, <laughs> South. Which Dark Zone? Right, which, which one? So, let's, just have, let's, let's see what kind of the options are on the top. Um, and also, I, just, I love seeing all the chat coming I going know. Off. Also, right. hello, we can see you. So. Everyone, everyone in the chat, make sure to vote in the poll. Vote, right? vote, vote, vote in the poll so we can see, see what you think. Right. <laughs> I, I, I love seeing this. Can't wait for more info. It's going to be exciting. And remember, guys, keep an eye on your whispers. You do have a chance of getting a code for the private beta, which is coming out from the 7th to the 11th of February. Um, and if you get whispered, you need to head over to www.thedivisiongame.com forward slash redeem to do that. Right, so Dark Zone Run West is winner. what people are excited about. <laughs> right. uh, to be fair, personal favourite as well, I agree. Shall we, we throw up a yeah. general gameplay there? Because I, I, like, there was some details while we were talking a little bit earlier about mm. kind of, kind of, about Dark Zone, which we kind of ne didn't necessarily see. Cause, like, what is the kind of difference between, because it was all those little tight little streets, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so what's like your favourite thing about Dark Zone West? I love personally the the combination of the um, just the, the aesthetics yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's it has a warm a disturbing warmth to it almost yeah, yeah. that that like it's this place of of death but it's beautiful yeah mm. and i also like the 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 tension and yeah. the anticipation and the, the the element of unknown that you know, winding streets, lots of little back alleys and stuff like that brings. So that's. Uh, it was one thing I definitely mind. noticed when I was playing in, uh, I mean, all the dark zones, but this one in particular, you just like, there's a real sense of stillness. And when your team is quiet, which doesn't happen often, but when everyone's quiet and everything's just calm, you just like, it just feels really eerie. Just feel like you're actually very alone out there, which is. I mean, that's how I feel like I should feel in a game like this. You should. Now, feel this isn't a particularly narrow, tight area no. right at the moment, but but uh, there's there is really lots of that in in 
in the in West. But it's yeah. quite it's quite cool that you've got this though in West as well, even though like a large proportion of it is those really tight. Because it means yeah. that if you do have specializations like the 50 cal, Absolutely. there are spaces that you can take advantage of them. So this might be like if you're going on the road, you might spend mm. a lot of time around here right. if you really like using the 50 cal, which really is, which is really exciting. It's I, I mean, it's about creating variety, but it. it, it I think it's a, you're making a great point for me. Like it, it's not about creating a mono environment. I'm where sorry. it's like, oh, it's like this all the time. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lifelong tryhard, so I'm always looking <laughs> at like kind of where 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 I can get advantages of different <laughs> things. I'm like, this would be the perfect place to be using the 50 cal, sitting like down the bottom there, like <laughs> peeking over a car as people rush towards you. Um, but, but not only that, but like all of the different like skills you can use and things like. Yeah. You'd, I'm sure there'll be advantageous to different areas like maybe the drone might be quite useful in these tight winding areas where it can't go wide it has to go straight forward right. it has to follow a certain path to help you out um, I really I really wish I, I can't I can't wait to hop on to like kind of the and stuff and kind of get involved because like go on manhunts and kind of get involved in the PvP and try yeah. it out because um, we're like lucky enough to play it's very fast there to help. I, uh, I know, it was, uh, it was the quickest helicopter ever. <laughs> that's that's what said, not final. Yeah, I, I think that's a really important. Remember, yeah. guys, from all the loot drops that we've seen in the gameplay today, um, like everything, this is not, the, this was an early build, um, so this isn't the final release of the game, so it's not going to be the same. Um, so we're going to take a little bit further forward so we can look at some stuff that we haven't seen yet. Some bit more gameplay <coughs> uh, in the area, because we got to this point where yeah. we were. Cleared the landmark. Yeah, we're clearing a landmark, going up a thing where we got to see the armor for the first time with the uh, against sugar. Yeah, right. we stared at the dead bodies, wondered what was going on there. <laughs> um, what like what is that? An example? I don't know. It's scary. Was that something hanging from them as well? I don't. I want to find out, but I also don't. Yeah, it's, it's the things like all the small details because mm. yeah, we we talked about on the PvP Ooh. elements um, about kind of all the level of detail in terms of like verticality and stuff. Have yeah. you kind of done that within the dark zone as well? Oh, absolutely. I mean the. Uh the Dark Zone is a, it's a, as a developer, it's a fantastic, you know, exercise, hmm. if you will, almost like because because that it of the fact that it supports PVE and PVP everywhere all the time. Yeah. So it, it's there's a lot of craftsmanship that goes into creating that that you no know, you know, uh, hybrid environment, but absolutely there's a lot of that. That thinking going into the dark zone, mm -hmm. of course, to really create initiated uh, different variety and opportunity. Yeah, this is, this is the thing I'm kind of excited about is like kind of like stealing dark zone yeah. drops and stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, it's the fact that when you go rogue, it's not just oh no, I accidentally shot someone. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's you have to deliberately do actions that cause you to go rogue. So for example, you hold down a button on the controller that makes you go rogue, or you go steal some of this drop. Yeah. And uh, it's all like, it is deliberate choice. You get to choose specifically what kind of agent you're going to be in the dark zone. And we, we saw him leveling up there. Yeah, we That's did. actually uh, something I'd like to point out, that we've, we've associated a, a progression of player facing, yeah. meaning player choice, yeah. perks associated with dark zone level. So as you gain dark zone level, you'll be able to go to a dark zone officer in the base operation and mm -hmm. enable perks that will really alter and help your, your, your Dark Zone experience, which uh, in itself is a lot of fun, but it yeah. also means that keeping your level up mm -hmm. becomes uh, precious if you want to keep those perks. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. don't be too reckless <laughs> in going manhunt. I'll, I'll try not to. Uh, just also a big thank you to everyone getting involved in the chat. Um, and hosting, it's all re really, really appreciated, and I'm glad you guys have been hyped uh, for Division Two. Because uh, like, it's, it's the thing is that when when you start seeing gameplay and you start getting more news, you get more and more excited to kind of get involved yeah. in the beta. Uh, and some of you watching as well have been uh, being whispered Division Private Beta codes as well, uh, which is from the 7th to the 11th of February. So if you if you get one of those codes, make sure to head over to the Division Game, um, the divisiongames.com forward slash redeem, uh, so you can get the codes. So you've got access to the beta. You can get your Hands on Division 2, the What's earliest that? possible time. Got electrocuted. Mm. Those are like a thurible. Mm. Right. We've got True over here, murdering that guy. <laughs> Caught out in a bad position there as well. And then there's up the escalator. Yeah, I, I like, I'm just going to go up here. I, I think this is one of the funnest things, and I don't know if it's, you find it as well, it's one of the funnest things to do is explore yeah. and like find what parts of the map work yeah. best for you. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's really a. Uh, it, it, it's really in the DNA of the Division 2 is mm -hmm. exploration. Uh, and we've, I mean, it goes for the Dark Zone as well as the rest of the, uh, the entire mm -hmm. open world. Like, the 
benefit and enjoyment you'll get from exploration this time around. I'm not going to say more than yes. Make sure that you yeah, go, yeah. Yeah. Go, go off the beaten Yes. Okay. Just don't get right. <laughs> so I, th I think the next important thing to do is for everyone at home that will probably want to know is the key dates right, that we've right. got. So when can people get their hands on the game to give it a go? March 15th on mm -hmm. Xbox One, yeah. PlayStation 4 and PC. Yeah, and I remember as well the private beta, right, which you can get access to if you pre-order the game. It's available from the 7th to the 11th of February, which mm -hmm. is, it, is incredibly exciting. I can't wait. Uh, and we're going to be streaming that here on Xbox On, so do make sure to follow the channel uh, if you're not already. Yeah, and when will we be seeing a little bit more info about like the PvE or other areas of the game that we've not really had a chance to look at? Soon. Soon. <laughs> Soon. Very right. ominous. And uh, how are players uh, also going to be able to get involved in the beta? Right, so we've, we've gone over, oh, so I, I've, I've already, so I've already good, answered my own question. I've already said the question, redeem the codes, and if you're being whispered one in the chat, you have them uh, right there. But um, it has been an awesome stream. So should we quickly kind of summarize everything we've gone, gone over so far and we've kind of seen for the first time yeah. uh, right here on, on the stream. So first of all, Tom Clancy's Division 2 will offer a gigantic right, and generous experience at launch, including a meaningful story campaign, Right, diverse multiplayer activities and a genre-defining end-game experience. Uh, the Division 2 will also continue to grow post-launch and regular new content, seasonal events, and eight-player raids eight and more. Player I can't so wait for eight-player raids. For it's going to be awesome. I know. With the specializations and stuff mm. as well, it's like really a lot of class optimization. I just, I just, I just can't wait it. to see like kind of the like hear the communication between everyone, oh, the kind of like yeah. the coordination and seeing what we've got in store. It's going to be plan. so fun. Uh, taking learnings from the original game and feedback from the community, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 has refined the Dark Zones formula, which will deliver richer and fairer competitive environments for all players across three separate zones. Right, and also Tom Clancy's <laughs> Division 2, uh, new Dark Zones will offer something for every agent, whether you're a hardcore player that games every day and loves to take on other players, or a more casual gamer who wants to explore and focus on the NPCs instead. So a bit of something for everyone. Yeah, organized PvP and the Dark Zone are truly integrated into Tom Clancy's The Division 2 to give gamers a complete multiplayer experience at launch on March 15th. Important date there, regardless of your gameplay preference. So anyone can have a good time. I think it sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Really <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, but that, that's it. We've come to the end of our Division 2 stream. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do remember over to www.thedivision.com forward slash redeem uh, to enter the private beta, which is from the 7th to the 11th of February, which is kind of the, the moment that I, I cannot wait for. <laughs> um, and also, you guys have been amazing in the chat. Thank you for Thank you. all the hosts, all the follows. Uh, you guys have been absolutely awesome. So Division 2 hype in the chat will be really, really appreciated. Yeah. So go do that. <laughs> you can catch more from us on Xbox on here on daily in the weekdays with loads of different fun games and hijinks. And you can also catch us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Xbox One, where we are going to be putting out more info about the division and uh, a little bit more from there as well. Yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you to yeah. Matthias for joining us. Thank yeah, you. So a pleasure. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> big, big thank you to Matthias right in the chat. Uh, and that is thank you so much once again. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.